Blood Curse slash Teludara Season 1, Episode 2. This thoughts of this episode is called Bloody Anniversary. So the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG after strikers and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's get into the episode and I'm going to start by addressing something awkward. I realized watching this episode I messed up. I swear I can tell. I'm, I'm not like racist and can't tell people who aren't white apart. I mistook the character of Essa for the character of Reno in a in my video on episode one. I think it's the f we're told in episode one we were in ep in episode one we see that Essa's father goes to the hospital and then we hear the message from Reno to to Wulan that his father's in the hospital so I thought that those were the same yeah you know I realized watching this episode that they're absolutely not the same person so to get into this specific episode so yeah we get a flashback to if I understand correctly the anniversary of Wulan's parents and we see Reno, you know, propose to Wulan, and you can tell she didn't expect it, she wasn't ready for it, and because of it being, you know, this public proposal in front of family, the family of both of them, she feels pressured into, or at least, at least her family, she feels pressured into saying yes you know and th this is sadly something that happens to a lot of women you know rom-coms have solidified this idea that women love a sudden big romantic gesture proposal and there's there's a lot like a lot of things you see in movies it's not always the case for for some it absolutely is but you know I'm not saying don't propose, I'm saying talk to her about it, and if she says she's not ready, accept that. That doesn't mean that it'll never happen, you know, if she says it'll never happen, then that's, you know, but, yeah. So, so yeah, I really appreciate, and, yeah, and we hear, you know, she, she t talks to her father, and she's like, I, you know, I got this job, that was what I wanted to do, and now I have to be a housewife, you know, and yeah, this is very progressive. I really, you know, before I started watching this, I was a little bit concerned that it was going to be conservative, but I love the genre of horror, so, you know, I figured I'll, I'll go with it, but yeah, so far it's very progressive. There's, you know, the, the conservative outlook on marriage is that you have to go through with it, but there's a lot of empathy for Wulan in calling off the marriage. And let's see. Yeah, and so she, you know, great cut from her looking at the ring on her finger right after the proposal to, to her, you know, after having taken it off, you know, yeah, the, the, in both scenes, she's in a bathroom, you know. Yeah, she's, she's looking at the finger, thinking about, you know, the time that which is, I suppose, also the reason why we saw it at this point in the show. But yeah, the, the um, uh, let's see, yeah, and then we get, you know, she, yeah, she's, she's washing her face, and then suddenly the water is, like, black, and there's hair, and she just keeps pulling, and it's like, oh, God, please, no. And eventually she gets, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I wish it wasn't in the show, I'm saying it's effective horror. And at the very bottom, there's these nails, which is also what we see at the very end of the episode. Some of what Wulan's father coughed up were this bundle of nails. And for a second, I thought, you know, the, the camera going to the, the flowers was like 
saying, you know, Wulan's brother is right, uh, you know, the, the nervous servant is, is part of this. But then we see the flowers, like, wilt and die, which, you know, that, we've been seeing that. That doesn't mean that it's, you know, the other times we saw it, it wasn't something that we connected with the servants working on, like the, the dead animal and all the maggots in general. And, yeah, we see the, the funeral, the f funerals, you know, and I appreciate, we see, you know, several people who are very, you know, who were very grateful for the help that Bondon gave them, and they tell his son, uh, Essa. And, let's see. Yeah, and, yeah, so it's brought up that, you know, the, the leader of the, the servants is, uh, you know, chastising the, the young nervous one, uh, you know, saying, you, you shouldn't be snooping, uh, you know, and we again see the, the, ah, uh, is it, I think it's Wulan, who's like, you know, telling the, the leader, you know, yeah, the servant leader, you know, you should, you should be guiding him. Don't, don't yell at him. Give him a chance. And, let's see. Yeah, and, yeah, um, the servant, Asep, shows a lot of fear when, you know, they, they talk to him about, was it the flowers? There was something that, you know they were they were suggesting he should he should help with or something and he you know he wasn't just like upset at being yelled at for supposedly snooping and let's see yeah and so you know uncle rafi died and you know his widow blames wulan and her family which, you know, that's, it's a very human reaction. You know, we want it to be someone's fault. Someone has to pay for this. And, see. yeah, and Essa calls Wulan's father, which, the, the, yeah, you know, as you know, as I theorized in episode one, they're they're getting to the point of realizing that there's a connection between what happened to one's family, what happened to the others, and yeah. So Aunt Rima shows up at Wulan's work, asking her for the money, and yeah. So. You know, Wulan's father divorced her, and, you know, apparently she has gotten the money that she was entitled to from the the divorce. And, you know, yeah, Wulan's father expresses, you know, he feels like no matter what, she's always asking for more money. It's like it's never enough. And that is, you know, there there are some, you know, men and women who, the, the you know, after a divorce, feel like they, they yeah, feel wronged and, and want more. And the, the, and I really appreciate, you know, yeah, so, so calling off a wedding, the show says that's, you know, that's understandable. Divorce, also seen as understandable, you know, no one, no one treats her, treats Rima badly for being divorced. It's the fact that she keeps asking for money, you know, after she's gotten what she was due. They're not saying, you deserve nothing, you shouldn't have gotten a divorce, kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it is the, the, you know, when, when someone asks for money from one person, and they don't really get a result, they might go to family members and try to pressure them. You know, that does happen in real life as well. And we learned that 
I think they're talking about Wulan's brother's girlfriend, you know, who Wulan apparently feels like is too old for him. You know, she says, you know she's my age. And, yeah, she's one month out of rehab and apparently went right back to dealing, even though she also has a job. So there is a bit of a theme in the show so far of, like, people feeling like they don't have enough money. They want more money. And, you know, greed is a major theme in a lot of stories dealing with the supernatural. You know, greed is punished very severely. So I can imagine that's where they're going with that. And, yeah, Wulan's brother actually falls asleep in the car and, you know, I appreciate she's not, like, you know, trying to get him back awake. She just, you know, softly tells the, the servant driving the car, Tur turn down the music, you know, so that he doesn't, you know, and, and he's like, turn down for what? And she explains so that you won't wake him. That's fine. And... Yeah, so, yeah, and, and Wulan and her mother are both worried about her father. I'm not loving, I feel like they're making Wulan's mother, this this was the first scene where I I felt like they were trying to give her a fair shake. I, I feel like they're making her kind of a um, negative stereotype, you know, she, yeah, I, I hope that the... I hope they continue what they did in this scene, where she does legitimately seem like she's just concerned. You know, up to this point, she's come across as a little too focused on her own stuff and not as much. Like, it's Wulan's father who comes to Wulan and says, it's, you know, you did the, if, if you feel that you shouldn't have gotten married to Reno, it was right of you to call off the wedding you know, seemingly Wulan's mother feels the same way, but she's not the one talking to Wulan and, like, comforting her when clearly that's something that Wulan needs. And... Yeah, more maggots in the ceiling, and we get some more thuds that we can't quite... We, we still don't know what that is, and I quite appreciate, you know, two, yeah, two for two. Both episodes so far, there's been these thuds. We still don't know what's causing it. And Wulan's father jump scares her, which, yeah, that's, that happens in real life, too. Dads jump scare sometimes. That's just a, a thing. Um, once when I was like 13, I was walking home with a friend of mine, we were talking about this horror movie, and we were like, hyping each other up that we had just seen, you know, talking about like, oh, remember the part of that, oh, that was super scary, you know, and I'm about to open the door to let us into my, you know, my house, well, my father's house, you know, lived live with him at the time, and... He apparently saw us, we, our, our door has like a window, so, you know, he apparently saw that we were walking up, waited until I reached for the door handle, and then suddenly opened it, just to, just to get a reaction from us. It was very funny. All three of us thought it was very funny. Not, not only him, which is not always the case with, with dad jokes. Sometimes it's just for, for the dad. And, yeah, Wulan is talking with her client who says, you know, she has a negative aura. And whatever's happening, just surrender to it, you know. And the, the yeah, we, we again see that she's not really a fan of the, the guy Wulan's working with speaking English, you know. And, and he keeps having to be reminded, you know, that that's, she, she prefers if you speak Indonesian, which... Yeah, you know, she's she's maybe, like, middle-aged or something, or at least, I would guess, at least 40. Some of the, the, you know, it is sometimes the older generations who are especially adamant that you speak your own language and not someone else's, even if that other language is considered to be, you know, superior in, in some way. And... 
you know, and, and he works in this fairly, like, I mean, not everyone who works with investments, not all of them are young, but it is the kind of thing where, you know, you gotta have your finger on the pulse. It's considered, like, the kind of thing, you know, compared to, like, you know, you can, you can work in, like, you can be a carpenter until you're old, you know, yeah, as long as your, your body can take it, you can keep working in that. But if you're, if you're not, you know, completely 100% up to the task, you can't work in investment. At least not have an important job there. And, yeah, we get a little bit more CG that's not completely convincing. But I don't blame them for not, I, I don't know that you can really get the kind of thing out of a wasp that they needed for for this so it's completely understandable and yeah so so Wulan's mother is getting a massage you know and at first it's like oh that's perfect you're you know you're great at this and then like you know she spots the wasp and then she's like ah don't stop you're doing it too hard. okay there you go that's that's right and then the massage therapist comes in so it's like Whose massage hands was I feeling? You know, just, yeah, love it. Absolutely. Just, because that really is, like, so creepy. And it's the kind of thing, you, we don't think about it. But, you know, yeah, when you go to a massage therapist, like, if they're working on your back, you can't see them. And, like, you know, hypothetically, it could be someone else, you know. It's, obviously, that's not very likely to happen. But, yeah, it's it's great. I, I think a lot of the best stuff on the show so far... The, not all of it, but a lot of it is when we don't see a thing, where we're just, like, aware that something is happening, we maybe hear a noise, or someone is reacting to something that they're feeling in this case, you know. But the, the you know, the, the centipedes and, and maggots, that's also great stuff. Absolutely. And... Yeah, you know, she, she looks back down, and there's a swarm of war wasps, and it's like, oh, God. which is also great. I, I honestly, I was waiting for, you know, once she closes her eyes, and it's like, oh, that's perfect massage. I was waiting for it to, like, fly up her nose or something, but for it to instead be, no, there's, you know, there's a spirit massaging her to roughly... And then when she, you know, looks back down, there's the, a swarm of wasps. You know, that I did not at all expect. And Reno attacks Wulan in her car, trying to tear the, the door open. Which, you know, that is sadly... You know, it is very stalker X behavior kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, and I really appreciate that... It's not trying to make us think that he's the good guy in this. You know, I've seen... There are some American movies, at least, where, like, they're trying to make us hate the woman and make us think that the guy is is completely right to be abusing her. And it's just really, really messed up. So, yeah, I really appreciate that... Yeah... And see. yeah, and we learned that Wulan's father's watch is missing, and Wulan's brother is completely certain that it's the the servant. And I, I appreciate you know, like the others are like, don't you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't be so quick to suspect someone, and you know the you know they're they're not, yeah. Because it is, you know, it's it's pretty gross to, to yeah, just suspect someone that is, is working for you to, to be doing something wrong without fairly clear evidence. Let's see, and, yeah, we see some maggots on the floor, and... Yeah, the the brother is still taking pills, which is also I think that's why he fell asleep in the car. You know, he he's he said in episode one that he was gonna stop taking the pills, 
after the tests. Now it's not completely clear if all the tests was was the one he was working on episode one was that the last one maybe but you know he is he's taking pills and yeah you know if you take a pill that makes you hyper focus eventually you're you know you're gonna come back down and you're gonna get really really exhausted. Let's see and yeah we get more wasps and he accidentally breaks the the frame. Which, you know, when, when he explains that at the table, Mulan's like, you're always doing this. And he's like, I'm not doing it on purpose. Which is very accurate. Like, evidently, brothers and sisters are the same all over the world. Because that really is, that feels like it could have come right out of, like, an American or English or Danish uh, production as well. And, yeah, we, you know, the, the mother doesn't apparently doesn't know what they mean when they say K-drama, but it is indeed a Korean drama, and, you know, they're talking about, oh, you know, the servant made the, the ceiling look right out of the, look like the set of a Korean drama. And, yeah, so Essa is digging, you know, yeah, found, found the finds a dead animal's head, which, to be fair, would be worse if the severed animal's head was still alive. That, I do think, would probably, you know, you, you gotta count your blessings at that point. But yeah, that was under the floor, and there are maggots there, so, yeah, you know, both families have now con found a dead animal with maggots, you know, in, in one case, under the floorboards, in another case, right above the, the ceiling. So, yeah, it is clearly, you know, this is not something that just happens naturally. You know, this does appear to be black magic. And we end on... So, I, so they're two for two. Is, thir is the third episode going to introduce a third father so that can then, like, be sick and have to go to the hospital? Because that's... I'm kidding, obviously. But yeah, the, the um, you know, Wulan's father is, like, coughing and, you know, the, the um, you know, tries to drink some water, still coughing. They ask for the servant to come in and bring more water just in time for the father to spit blood in her face. Not on purpose, but that's... Nope. Not a not a fan. Did not f again. I'm obviously I'm saying it's effective horror. The the um, yeah, you know, he keeps keeps coughing, coughs up some some blood which we later see contains this bundle of nails. So again, you know, clearly not natural. There's something going on here. Something supernatural going on here. I like that several times near the end of the episode, it would cut from a close-up of like something that had maggots or the dead animal's head with maggots and such to a delicious-looking piece. You know, again, like it. I think they in the, in the first episode as well, they would cut from like Essa and Bonden being kind of miserable to to Wulan and her family. You know, yeah, having a significantly better experience, you know, so, yeah, right, and I, I quite appreciate this thing of, you know, apparently they were careful to get the the kind of cake that Wulan's mother loves, and she says several times, you know exactly what I, you know, what kind of dessert I love, which, again, love to see it, you know, and that's a very common, you know, it's, it's very cliche, very stereotypical, and obviously it's not the only thing you should do for the, the women in your lives to show you love them. But yeah, remembering the dessert they like and getting that for them when you're celebrating something, you know, yeah, it, it shows you care. You know, if you have a bad memory like me, write it down. You know, when, when they say, ooh, I really like this thing, make sure to write it down, save the, the note you wrote it on somewhere that you can find it again, and go from there, you know, but yeah, I, I really appreciate that, you know, they're showing they care by getting that cake, she's showing she appreciates it by thanking them for it, you know, so, again, that's making her look less, you know, 
early on she came off as a little self-obsessed but that's maybe also maybe what they're going for is that she just she is a good person she is selfless you know I she yeah she was very grateful to the servant about the 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 flowers you know she she was like really showering him with praise you know so which, which again you know a lot of rich people would say he's just doing his job you know you ask him to do flowers he did flowers who cares you know but again yeah it's it's just a nice thing to do I personally don't think anybody should have servants working for them but here we are and yeah um, it's it's definitely better if you're being you know yeah if you're showing gratitude verbally yeah, I think that is all that I have to say for the episode. I guess I'll... I am a tiny bit worried that it's going to turn out to be some kind of, like, class thing that, like, poor people are out to hurt rich people, maybe especially, like, servants. I'm hoping that turns out to be, like, a misdirect, you know, like, it's a, it's a horror mystery. There's, you know, I can imagine there's going to be red herrings. I'm not sure I've seen any so far, but, you know, I, I could imagine that's going to be the kind of thing. Because, you know, sadly, there are a number of... This is not an Indonesian thing. This is a, a global thing. There are a number of, like, stories about the supernatural where it is someone that, you know, is is rich or in some way seemingly safe and they're being attacked by an evil force controlled by someone poor so yeah i i hope that's not what's going on here but yeah so far it's been very progressive in a lot of ways i would honestly be kind of surprised if they end up going that route so which i suppose could also could be a misdirect but yeah uh let's see next episode i'm going to do I'm thinking next Monday or Wednesday. So, until then, curse that blood.